Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 26th of November 2024. Now before getting into the list of articles for today's discussion, I have an important announcement. It is regarding our pre-swimming test series. It is starting today, but the orientation for the test has already started on 21st November 2024. So if you have not enrolled for this particular test, you can click the link in the description and you can enroll for this particular test. So with this note, let us move on to the list of articles for today's discussion. In this first article, we will be seeing about our constitution and how it has been evolved. This is a very special article written by Mr. Sashi Tharoor and since today is constitution day, noting this article is very important. And in the second article, we will be seeing about India's current account deficit and the measures that can be taken to tackle this CAD. So without any delay, let us move on to the Main's perspective of news article discussion. Now look at this editorial article from the Hindu newspaper. This article talks about the speech given by our principal draftman who is none other than Mr. B. R. Ambedkar. So let us revise about the important points given in the article one by one. See before that this year is very important and very special because it is 75th anniversary of Indian constitution's adoption. So, the constitution was adopted on November 26, 1949. Even though it was adopted on that day, it came into effect only on January 26, 1950 because this is the day where the Purna Swaraj declaration was celebrated on 1930. So, in order to commemorate this day, the Republic Day has been celebrated every year. And the main or the core principle of Indian constitution is justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. So we can tell that constitution has actually laid the foundation of India's democratic framework. So with this note, now even though we praise a lot about constitution today, it actually has a century long of history that we cannot forget. So it has, so it all actually started on 1600 when British arrived in the form of East Indian Company in India. So since then they have been ruling our country until 1947 and the company they ruled from 1773 to 1858. This is because 1857 the revolt happened and, the, and that is where the company they transferred the administration of India to the crown itself. So from 1858 to 1947 is the major point where the constitution assembly demand and the constitution framing has been made prominent. So we can tell that in 1906 is the first time the idea of constitution assembly was implicit in the demand for Swaraj and in 1934 M. N. Roy he explicitly asked or put forward the idea of constitution assembly. And in 1935, a year later, this idea was put in formally by Indian National Congress and demanded for a constitution assembly. In 1940, the August offer or the demand of constitution assembly was accepted in principle and this later led to the Cripps proposal in 1942 where the Muslim League rejected and it did not happen. And in 1946 cabinet mission, they gave a framework for the formation of constitution assembly which has been accepted by both, both Muslim League and the Indian National Congress. And this later led to the constitution of constitution assembly in November 1946. And this is a very important history that you have to remember when it comes to constitution assembly and the drafting of constitution. So with this basics, now let us move on to the news article. Here the author highlights three important things that has been noted by our uh, principal draftman of Indian constitution, Mr. Ambedkar. The first important thing is the moral standards of leaders and society. See, he said that even though if a constitution is very good, if the custodian of the constitution is not working good, then the purpose or the reason behind making a constitution very good is will went in vain. So that is what you can see here in the wordings. However good a constitution may be, it is sure to turn out bad because those who are called to work it happen to be a bad lot. So this is the first important thing. So by telling this, he emphasizes that there should be a moral standard for the leader as well as the society. Secondly, he talked about the in the interdependence of principles. See, firstly, he said about the liberty without equality. So, remember, if 
there is a society just imagine if there is a society and in the society there is liberty and there is no equality so there is a particular hierarchy uh, where uh, the sh a particular people should be very lower so if this inequality is there but there is liberty then there will be dominance of few and in the same society if there is equality without liberty then it will lead to oppression or the suppression of initiatives so in order to tackle both we need fraternity or the brotherhood this will sustain liberty and equality and also bind the society so the third important thing that he talked about is the caste inequality see there has been given reservation that to temporarily for certain oppressed communities but he actually advocated for caste annihilation annihilation in the sense complete eradication and he opposed permanent caste based hierarchy this is because he felt that the caste division actually hinders equality and unity so these are all the three important things that you have to note with respect to this particular speech firstly the moral standards of the leaders secondly uh, caste inequality thirdly the lacune lacune means a gap so this gap can be filled by fraternity so you can make note of these three points and you can even use it in the main answer writing so having seen this now let us move on to the current challenges even after 75 years later see the first thing is the limited progress there is persistent social and economic inequality even today and the main reason behind this is the colonial era um insisting this because this colonial era actually gave a lot of rights to the landlords and synthetically they actually maintained the inequality to be persisting in the society in order to have their personal gains the second important issue is the fraternity fragility see there are identity based politics that is actually weakening the cohesion now even though there are a lot of provisions again against hate speech and polarizing the population there actually exist identity based politics and there is also caste based politics many political parties they actually advocate for reservation for particular community and through that they try to grab the vote bank in a particular region or within a particular community this is actually causing or leading to political discourse discourse and the unsolved inequality also drive to newer demands and both this divisive politics actually erode public trust on the institution especially our parliament judiciary and executives so even they are facing criticism in the current scenario and there are also identity politics and institutional erosion that is challenging our constitution idols so in order to rectify this important challenge we have to focus a lot on ethical governance and this can be done by two important people firstly citizen and secondly leadership so the leaders they should be ethical and they should be responsible and citizens they should also defend justice equality and the fraternity they should be citizens should have apathy towards political misuse and thereby they should defend the justice equality and fraternity so by combining both the leadership ethical leader and the active citizenship we can uphold constitutional values apart from this there are certain recommendations that has been given in the article let us see them one by one firstly the revival of constitutional values we have to strengthen democratic institutions especially our parliament especially our judiciary and executives and we have to promote fraternity through education secondly we have to address social inequality this should be beyond identity politics and it should focus on economic inclusivity so whenever there is an upper hand in economy any kind of social inequality can be overcome so we should focus on economic inclusivity thirdly we should protect our freedom we should ensure healthy debates and we should also safeguard our constitutional freedoms so these are all important recommendation and lessons that can be undertaken in order to uphold the constitutional values so this is what the entire article is about now i have a mains question for you let me read out the question starting from inventing the basic structure doctrine the judiciary has played a highly proactive role in ensuring in ensuring that india developed into a thriving democracy in the light of the statement evaluate the role of constitution in holding india as a whole so it is a 15 marker for 250 words you can write the answer in the comment section and post it we will we will also review your answer 
So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article as the title itself hints, this article talks about India's current account deficit and how the current account deficit actually reflects the strength of India's service sector. So it actually discusses the link and to know that link you have to know about the basics of the current account deficit. So we shall see that in the news article discussion. Before that I have a mains question for you. Let me read out the question. India's current account deficit CAD is both a challenge and an opportunity for economic growth. Discuss in the context of India's trade and investment policies. See this is a 15 mark question for 250 words. So you can write an answer and post it in the comment section. We will be reviewing your answer. So, we shall move on to the components of BOP or the balance of payment. So, this balance of payment actually has two accounts. One is the current account and another is the capital account. Here current it actually means uh, the account for which the day to day expense or the day to day revenue actually happens. But for the capital it actually means something long term, right. So, it actually includes a long term uh, investment or long term borrowing and it about long term it is like greater than one year right. So those kinds of investment or any kind of aid it will be coming under the capital account. So we shall see about the current account first for example the exports and the imports of any goods then the exports and imports of any services and then the unilateral transfers. Unilateral transfers is like uh, payment uh, or the remittances that we receive from a Gulf country or any other particular country and there are income receipts and payments. It is nothing but the earning or the spending of a particular business or a government that takes place in a day to day basis. So all this comes under the current account and when we talk about the capital account, the short term and even the long term borrowings and lendings that a particular government makes and then any kind of investment in the form of FDI, FPI, they come under this capital account, then the changes in foreign exchange reserves. So, so all these actually comes under capital account. So, this is the basics of uh, BOP. Actually, this BOP, it should be in a balance current account and capital account. It should be in the balance meaning the BOP should be zero. Okay, this is what and whenever there is a deficit in any one particular account, for example, if uh, you can take India and you can take any other country, uh, you can take country A for the safer side. Uh, so, if you are comparing India and country A, uh, the amount of import and export actually varies, right? So, if India is importing a lot and it is exporting very less than this country A, then it means it is in a current account deficit. Okay, So, this is what we call when a current account is in deficit, that is it. And in the holistic picture, we tell the current account is in deficit because this side the revenue or the expenditure will be lower when comparing it to a particular country. Okay, Now, let us see the current status of India's export. See, currently India has balanced the current account deficit by the capital inflow. Here you might have a doubt how the capital inflow will bring a balance in current account. See it is very simple this capital inflow in the form of FDI or the FPI bring in lot of uh, dollars inside our country right. So this dollars indirectly, indirectly compensate the current account deficit that is there in our country. So this actually reflects a strong investment appeal. Secondly, we are dominating the service sector. We are exporting a lot of service than any other country and in return we are getting lot of foreign reserves or currency of a particular country and we have a comparative advantage. See, when we take the goods export, we are actually way behind when we compare to Vietnam but when it comes to service export, we are the highest and we are actually competing in the global market. And and that is also the domestic demand that is actually driving the manufacturing growth as well. So, this is what the current status of our India's export. Now, we shall see about the implications of current account deficit. See, if the current account deficit is very small, then it means that the economy, the economic engagement with global market is high. And if it is very larger, then excessive foreign fund dependency is there and there is a forex depletion and there is potential instability in the economy. 
Now, when we talk about the trend of current account deficit in the financial year 2023 to 24, it has been 0.7 percentage of GDP. This is very down when we compare to 2.0 priorly. And this reduction, we can give the credits to reduced mercantile trade deficit. Since the mercantile, they has been reduced to their import level, it has actually stabilized the current account. So, having seen about the current account deficit, and the capital account. Now, we shall see what are all the strategies that can be done in order to reduce the current account deficit. See, the first thing is to boost export. We can export, we can boost the export by three ways. Firstly, manufacturing export, we have to strengthen make in India, we have to provide lot of schemes like the PLI, especially to particular sectors like electronic, pharmaceutical and automobiles, which have a lot of market around the world. Secondly, we have to diversify markets. We have to focus on other important countries like Africa, Latin America, Asia and etc. Thirdly, we have to enhance service exports, especially we have to leverage IT, BPO and we have to explore lot of fintech, legal and healthcare se sector around the world. Secondly, we have to focus on energy transition. We have to invest a lot in uh, renewables, especially we have to promote the electronic vehicles. Secondly, we can encourage local manufacturing. This can be done by enhancing production of electronics, machinery, defense equipments within India through the Atmanirva Bharat. Thirdly, we have to concentrate more on agricultural self-sufficiency. See, India is known for its agricultural products. So, we have to provide all the backward and forward linkages for the prosperity of this particular sector and we have to improve the productivity in order to reduce the edible oil and pulses import. This actually constitute the highest share when it comes to importing from another country. Thirdly, we can attract a lot of foreign investments. Just now we saw that FPI and FDI has actually stabilized current account, right? So, we can bring in lot of FDI by focusing on infrastructure, defense and technology and by and when it comes to FPI, we have to maintain the macroeconomic stability and we have to bring in investor friendly climate. Finally, we have to bring in efficient resource management and for this, we have to promote digital load alternatives and we have to bring tax, tax incentives in order to reduce the gold imports. And secondly, we have to focus on energy efficiency and we have to adopt energy saving technologies in order to cut the crude oil imports. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember when it comes to current account. So, so far we saw about the BOP. In this BOP, we saw there are two different accounts, current account and a capital account. So, when there is a deficit in current account, we call it as current account deficit. So, this current account deficit can be uh, altered or can be stabilized by a lot of measures we saw about them. Now, before ending the news article discussion, I have another announcement. It is regarding our October 2024 Editorial Analysis Monthly Marathon. It has been already posted in our YouTube. If you have not viewed it yet, you can view it in our YouTube channel. So, with this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and do not forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.